Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. The living world or its diversity in organisms, it's one of the same thing. Now what we need to understand here, first we need to talk about the scope of biology. See when we study biology, we need to understand that biology is studied in either, there are two languages to study biology, one is Greek, another is Latin. So whenever we study biology, we say biology is not an English term even though it is written in English. Logically, it has came from a Greek word that is bio and logi. Bio stands for bios and logi has came from the word logos, where bios means life and logos means study. So logically, what is biology? It is, can be defined as study of life. When we study biology, it is the story of life on earth. Right from the starting till now, whatever the life has been on this earth, that study is called as biology. Story of evolution of living organism on earth can also be termed as biology. When we talk about branches of biology, logically there are two, botany and zoology. When we talk about botany, it's a Greek word. It has came from the word botane. Botane means plant. Logically, I can say botany is also phytology because so phyto word means plant and zoology means study. When we talk about zoology, it is Greek word again. It has two meanings, zoo and logy, where zoo stands for animals and logy stands for study. So whenever we talk about botany and zoology, just remember that these are two Greek words. When we talk about the father of biology is none other than Aristotle, the father of botany is Theophrastus and father of zoology is Aristotle. What exactly is life? If somebody asks you what is life, it is very difficult to define life. You know, defining life is like searching a black ant in a dark room, which is impossible to do. But the question next comes is, are we living? Can we prove yes? So we can say, yes, I am living. So if somebody asks you how you can prove that you are living, just say, I show seven different life processes. What are those seven different life processes? So in short, I call it as Mrs. Gren, where M stands for movement, R for respiration, S for sensitivity, G for growth, R for reproduction, E for excretion, and N for nutrition. Among all these seven life processes, which is the most important one shown by all living organisms on this earth, no matter whether unicellular or multicellular, that is sensitivity. What is sensitivity? It is a response to stimuli. It is shown by the plants, it is shown by the animals, it is shown by the fungus, it is shown by the unicellular microbes also. Life basically has three important things. One is called as metabolism. When I say metabolism, it's a combination of two words, catabolism and anabolism. Cellular organization, every living organism on this earth is made up of cell. Viruses are not included in life concept because viruses are acellular structure. And the last important one is consciousness. Awareness about yourself and the surrounding is basically life. So when we talk about biodiversity, there are nearly 1.7 to 1.8 million types of species available on this earth even more than that but this is what we know when we talk about the institutes basically we say icbn what is icbn it is international code for botanical nomenclature when i say botanical it is plant so if you find any plant and you want to give a name to that plant that naming is done by the rules set by icbn at the same time when it comes to animals the rule is set by iczn most important question for your need, they can ask the full form. ICZN stands for International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. We have the word called as systematic. Anything you study, even your life has to be systematic. What is systematic basically? You can say it's a scientific study of similarities and differences among different kind of organisms. It means it involves three steps, identification, nomenclature and classification. In short, I can say I N C. Let's take the example of library. You want to search a book in the library. So if you don't know where exactly the book is placed in the library, you cannot search that book at all. When the book is systematically placed, you start first identification. Means you identify where the book will be. You say it's in the library. Then you go for nomenclature, name the book to the person that I want this book. Then he gives you exact classification. It is in the fourth shelf, fifth book or whatever. That is what is called a systematic. Systematic means placing everything in such a way that you can get it whenever you want. So logically, systematic includes three major words, I and C. That is identification, nomenclature and classification. It is called as taxonomy. 
so when i talk about taxonomy so logically i can say it's a branch of biology which deals with i have used the word sind see what is sind let's say you see an animal on the road and you don't know anything about that animal so what logically you will try to do first first is collection you try to collect all the possible information by looking at that animal what is the body what is the feature the form the shape and after collecting the information you identify that animal and after that you give a name to that animal that is called as nomenclature and after giving name you describe that animal to other people and finally we go for classification so when we talk about taxonomy just remember the word sind c what sind c means it's a branch of biology which deals with the collection identification nomenclature description and classification of information in plants and animals that is what is called as taxonomy taxa is basically it includes categories let's take for example wheat mammal rice plant animals etc these are all taxa concrete unit but a dog is a mammal at the same time it is an animal so these are three different taxa at three different levels that is what we should know with respect to taxon when you talk about classification what is classification just classifying let's take for example in your class if you try to classify the students you classify based on the gender as male or female you classify them based on their surnames you classify them based on their percentage that is what is classification so in classification with respect to diversity it is like grouping anything in convenient category based on the similarities and dissimilarities i try to classify the animals based on their similar features at the same time dissimilar feature that is what is classification there was a scientist in the name of ap de candolle who gave the term classification why classification is required is a big question why we should study classification so first to know various types of plants and animals available on this earth second to have reference system for all the plants and animals if you want to study any particular animal let's say i say kangaroo so when i say kangaroo it's very much clear it is available in australia so by using the term we come to know the geographical reference that is why classification is must then last to do nomenclature nomenclature means the art of naming something see the best part of human brain the beauty of human is what anything that is in the intelligence of man they always give a name to it no matter whether see a dog is called as a dog by humans is the dog aware that he is called as dogs we don't know and last and the most important why classification is required is to study phylogeny what is phylogeny evolution so when you study evolution it is purely based on classification what is the objective of taxonomy why taxonomy is required first to give a scientific name or nomenclature then to know the name affinity and geographical distributions of various organisms available on this earth name if i say penguins so you should understand the geographical distribution that is the most important objective of taxonomy for then there is to find the economic importance of all the animals what is the economic importance do we get any kind of product from them that is the economic economic importance to study phylogeny again evolution and the last to have a reference system for different scientists to study these are the different objectives of taxonomy when you talk about nomenclature it is the ability to name something or name to call we have three methods of nomenclature first is local name second is scientific name third is binomial nomenclature when i say local name means what you go in the market you just call a local name like in india we have different names for example mango mango is called as aam it is called as carry it is called as copper it has different different name locally available so when you talk about local name first of all it is a vernacular name vernacular name means the which can be used in local areas it cannot be spoken everywhere because the name for that particular fruit or particular animal is going to vary in the state or in different areas for example if a cat in hindi in up it is called as billi in maharashtra it is called as manjar manjar means what a cat yeah uh, the best part of local name is it is very short it is easy it is familiar to follow and the most important part it is easy to communicate in local for example mango scientifically is called as mangifera indica but if i say this to the fruit vendors on the street they will not understand so it is easy to communicate in the local languages the problems that we face while using local name is first of all it does not communicate the necessary information that is a big problem it does not communicate any relationship also there is no relationship with the name for example if i say mushroom 
Mushroom is in English, but Hindi it is called as Kukur Mutta. So, what exactly is the name? Kukur Mutta means what? Logically, it's dog's urine. So, it is not communicating the relationship with the mushroom and the Kukur Mutta. It is not universally accepted because if I say Kukur Mutta in Maharashtra, people might not understand. Or if I say Aam in America, people might not understand. It is not universally accepted and most important, it is misleading. It is not going to give you exact information. It is confusing. For example, there are different examples to follow. If I say spider lily, water lily, these are not at all lilies. These are basically the, you can say, flowers. So it is confusing. Problem, many names given to one particular organism. Let's understand the problem in a different way. If I say Ipomia batatas, in different languages it has different names. In English, it is called a sweet potato. In Hindi, it is called as Shakar Kand. In Assami, it is called as Mita Alu. In Telugu, it is called as Kandamul. In Marathi, it is called as Rattadu. In Kannada, it is called as Janasu. And UP8 people, they call it as Ganji. You know what is Ganji? So, this is one name for Ipumia Batatas. Very confusing. It is always misleading. Why it is misleading? Because if I say silverfish, starfish, jellyfish, all three of them are not fish at all. That is the drawback of the vernacular name. So, in order to avoid this, we went to the second name that is called a scientific name. But the problem of scientific name is it follows polynomial nomenclature. What is polynomial nomenclature? It is accepted worldwide, no doubt. But it is a very big name. Very big name. Uh, let's take an example as Sida Acuta. It is a very simple binomial name. But when we comes to scientific name, Sida Acuta is also called as Chrysophyllum, Follis, Ovalis, Supreme, Glabris, Parallel, Striatus, Septus, Tomentus, Sonitidis. It's a huge name. Who will remember such a big name? So, scientific name is accepted, but due to polynomial name, it is not that much practiced as we have the third method of naming that is called as binomial nomenclature. Every scientific person, every scientist follows binomial nomenclature. Bi means two, nomial means name. So, two names for every plant and animal. Let's understand binomial nomenclature. It was given by Carolus Linnaeus. He is the father of taxonomy, you can say. He wrote a book, Species Plantarum, in 1753. And in that book, Species Plantarum, Carolus Linnaeus mentioned about binomial nomenclature. What it says, every organism, let's say, has two names. First name will always be genera. Second name will always be species. Here, let's take, we are taking example of Mangifera indica. So, Mangifera becomes the genera and Indica becomes the species. The genera is the generic name, species is the specific name. The genus is a simple noun and species is going to describe, it's a descriptive adjective. Like Indica, it stands for India. Genus should always start with capital letter and species should always start with small letter. And the most important part, they have to be written in italics. If they are not written in italics, then it has to be underlined separately. And it should not be less than 3 or more than 13 letter word. If I say Azadi Rasta Indica, that is the name for Neem. So, Neem, when we can count the number of alphabets, it is not more than 13. There is a word called a citation. For example, the scientific name have been given by some scientist. So, if I write the name of the scientist after the binomial name, it is called a citation. For example, Mangifera Indica, it is scientific name for Mango. But Mangifera Indica L dot means Linnaeus, the scientist who gave the name Mangifera Indica, that is called a citation, writing the name of author after the scientific name. What is the rule? Species can be same but not the genus. Example, Mangifera Indica or Azadi Rasta Indica, it has same species but different genus. When we talk about hierarchy, see taxonomic hierarchy means what? Hierarchy means the rank. Every person is having a rank or every organization has a rank. For example, if I take the rule of school. So, in school we have trustee, we have principal, we have vice principal, we have supervisor, we have teachers, we have staff, then we have peons, then we have all students. These are all taxonomic hierarchy. So, arrangement of organisms based on their rank or position in descending order is called as taxonomic hierarchy. In classification world, we start with kingdom that is the highest one. And the species is the lowest one. There are two terms involved. One word is taxon. Second word is category. What is taxon? Group of organism used to represent concrete unit of classification, which is not going to change. For example, if I use the word principal. So, principal of school, 
will be constant the person sitting on that chair might keep on changing that is called as a taxon h j lamb was the scientist who came up with the word taxon second we have category what is category it is a rank or level in the hierarchy of classification for example if i say i am category 1 officer it means that i belong to the higher rank if i say i am category 3 it means i belong to the lower rank so somewhere every animal has a different categories in the hierarchy of classification that is called as category highest category is kingdom and the lowest category is species based on this taxonomic status categories are assigned most important to be taken care of now let's understand three domains of life given by kalbus in 1990 what kalbus mentioned that genetic sequencing has helped us to analyze the relation between organisms each and every living organism on this earth they are connected to each other by few percentage of nucleotide sequence that is for sure because we all know that the genetic code atcg is universally present in all the living organisms so based on the differences carl boos focused on ribosomal structure that is rrna rrna is a building block for ribosome based on the different types of ribosomes available carl boos defined three domains of life those three domains are archaea prokarya bacteria and eukarya so when you say archaea it is these are all prokaryotic organisms archaea bacteria when i say bacteria it includes again the prokaryotes one u bacteria that is the true bacteria when i say eukarya it includes all the eukaryotes that is the true organisms what is the difference between archaea bacteria and eukarya when i say archaea no cell membrane no cell organelle no nucleus but when i say bacteria it has a cell membrane but no nucleus no cell organelle when i say eukarya it has a cell membrane it has nucleus and it has everything so in eukarya you have four different kingdoms protista fungi plantae animalia and in bacteria the second domain you have kingdom monera 